with Big E suffering a broken neck on SmackDown and an update on Cody Rhodes' WWE status, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for March 12th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Following AEW's acquisition of ROH, fans were unsure if the Supercard of Honor event would even be taking place. It turns out it will happen and Tony Khan will be the one personally handling the booking for the show with it set on Wrestling Observer Live. They did the sale as quick as they could and now they're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. The key is Tony Khan is going to be booking a show on April 1st, which isn't very far away and we don't have a lineup. It's going to be very tricky to put together a lineup. I would presume that there will be a bunch of AEW of you guys on the show just because there's nobody as in zero people under ring of honor contract all plans previous are off and con will be handling the creative but they're not looking at starting from scratch and eliminating champions and such or killing prior storylines With Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar set to collide in a title unification bout at WrestleMania, Corey Graves mentioned why this feud is so great on After the Bell. We never really got that true, decisive, this guy is better than that guy. We still don't know. The two of them had many interactions and collisions. We have teased it and taunted it. But we just do not know as this is no longer the same Roman Reigns from that WrestleMania. This is no longer the same Brock Lesnar from that WrestleMania. These two have both evolved in their career careers in a professional manner such that this is going to be a completely different matchup, arguably with two better versions of the superstars themselves. the applause of many, Jeff Hardy made his debut for AEW and Dynamite this week as the Hardy Boys are reunited and looking for a title shot at the tag team straps. On Busted Open Radio, AEW President Tony Khan gave props to Jeff following his initial appearance for the promotion. I do think he transcends age and experience in many ways. He's someone that a lot of young wrestlers can learn a lot from in terms of connecting with the crowd. He's also a fresh and exciting matchup for wrestlers in AEW, not just in tag teams, but he's a great singles wrestler. A former world champion. Having Jeff Hardy in AEW is going to be huge for singles and tag teams. It's going to be great for experienced wrestlers and people he's been in the same company with before. Then you have a whole locker room of people that have never been in the same company that have been dreaming of this moment. During his appearance on the Kurt Angle show, Chris Jericho talked about what separates AEW from WWE, noting that the creative freedom he found outside WWE made him fall in love with pro wrestling again. I think the biggest difference right out of the gate is AEW is our company. That's what really appealed to me to go there in the first place. I went to New Japan between WWE and AEW and the first match I had was with Kenny Omega in the Tokyo Dome. And I remember when we did the beatdown angle for it, Kenny got color and I was like, because we can't do color in WWE this needs this type of intensity. When you get blood, it's not a bloodbath. It's the intensity that adds to the performances of the players in the ring and the people watching. Then we had the match, very similar to the Shawn Michaels WrestleMania match. I had the whole ending. Kenny had the beginning. I thought, who do we have to tell this to? Who do we have to talk to? And Kenny said, what are you talking about? I said, well, who's the agent? Kenny said, there's no agents here. This is the match. This is what we're doing. Ghetto is the booker. We tell Ghetto the finish and then we do it. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? Creative control? More importantly, they trusted me to be an artist and let the artist be artist. You've got Kenny Omega, who is the top guy in New Japan. You've got Chris Jericho, who's coming in. Business went through the roof when the match was announced. So that kind of made me fall in love with wrestling again. The creative element of it. It was like flying live without a net. Not everything is connected. You don't have to tell the cameraman. Nobody knows what you're going to do. No one knows what you're going to say. Jericho would also mention that Tony Khan has never given any wrestler full creative control. 
full. Tony Khan has never given that to anybody but the creative freedom to be a pro. Tony gives you the space to be an artist, and it feels like it's our company, and I think the fans feel that too. We're in this together, and my analogy is that I started listening to Metallica in 1984 when no one knew who they were, and I stuck with them until they became the biggest band in the world, until they became the new Rolling Stones. I'll always feel a special closeness to them and a loyalty to Metallica because we started it together. I think our fans in the EW feel the same way. They're not just watching a show, they're a part of a show, and they believe in it. If more people come to watch, that's a different vibe. We let artists be artists. Despite all the rumors of Vince McMahon returning to in-ring action to take on Pat McAfee at WrestleMania, it's been confirmed that Austin Theory will be McAfee's opponent. Dave Meltzer would point out that McMahon can still make a return to action at Mania. What appears to be the idea is that there will be an angle to get McMahon into the match, likely overseeing the match and being at ringside rather than it being a handicap match, although that has been talked of as well. Given his shocking departure from AEW, many are wondering if and when we'll see Cody Rhodes in WWE. WrestleMania is just around the corner, but reports have come out claiming Rhodes is yet to sign with the promotion. While there's been talk of him making an appearance on Raw in Jacksonville, Ringside News would note, wouldn't it be neat if Cody Rhodes returned to WWE in Jacksonville? We're told, no one has been talking about Rhodes' return. Vince makes decisions on Raw, tells Bruce Prichard and Ed Koski and John Laurinaitis, and the rest of the team stays in the dark until Monday. Days. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer would add this in regards to Cody's WWE status. If he's on the show Monday, you already know. If he's not on the show Monday, and they don't do with Seth whatsoever, that means they're still talking and hopefully doing something. If they start Rollins with a new feud with somebody different, that tells you that Cody Rhodes is probably not at WrestleMania, or they're playing hardball back with him. After Monday's show, we're gonna have a better idea. In some unfortunate news, Big E suffered a serious injury on SmackDown last night. During a tag team match between The New Day and Sheamus and Rich Holland, Big E would get hit with a suplex on the outside by Holland, as the former WWE Champion landed on the top of his head. Big E would need to be stretchered out. After the show, he would take to Twitter to give fans an update from a hospital bed. Here's the video. I can't thank all of you beautiful people enough for all of your concern and your messages. It's very heartwarming. Uh, I can move all my digits. You see that? That's nice. That's always a good thing. Um, strength feels fine. But unfortunately, uh, right now, they tell me my neck is broken. So there's that. But uh, once again, thank you, everybody. I'm going to be all right. I'll be good. Don't worry. Go to sleep. Don't worry about all me. But uh, for real, thank you. And uh, I appreciate all of you. Room. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer mentioned that Biggie could be in a similar situation to Steve Austin regarding his broken neck. There are different levels of break, obviously. There are broken necks that can end your career, and a lot of wrestlers came back from broken necks. It could be that one-year surgery thing that Steve Austin, Benoit, and Edge had too. It might not be the end of the world, but it's still not good. According to Fightful, Rich Holland visited Biggie in the hospital to check on him last night. Several members of the roster also joined. Of course, many in the wrestling community would send their love to Big E. I feel sick to my stomach. I've said it many times over the years, suplexing is all about proper technique and training, not strength. Just heard about Big E, actively saying my prayers, wishing, hoping, and praying for a full and completely recovery for this amazing man. Big E is truly one of the most incredible humans I've ever known. Broken neck, and he's more concerned with how we all feel. We don't deserve that man. We love you, Big E. We love you, E. So thankful you are okay and in good spirits. The power of positivity. You're in my prayers. Big E. Thoughts and prayers, big man. Get well soon, E. You got this. Get well, my oos. Sending you so much love and light, E. Heal well, my friend. Lord, keep Big E. That was a scary bump. Hope for a speedy recovery. I saw your vid, Big E. You say don't worry, but you know what it is. Here's to your healing, brother. Wishing you a speedy recovery. Wrestlers from so many different companies sending well wishes to Big E speaks volumes on how amazing of a person he is. He is so loved and respect. Only Big E could stay calm and emanate so much positive with a broad
broken freaking neck, a one-of-a-kind human, an international treasure who should be protected at all costs. I wish I could be as strong as Big E. Man has a broken neck, and he's still smiling and staying positive. If I had a broken neck, I'd probably be crying my eyes out. What a man Big E is. Please be okay, Big E. In an additional video, Big E would note that he will not be needing neck surgery. <sighs> So uh, I got some really good news, uh, all things considered. Uh, the C1 and C6 are indeed fractured, not displacement though, which is uh, a very good thing. And uh, I don't have any damage to my spinal cord, no ligament damage and no surgery, which I'm very thankful for. And a pro tip, if you're gonna break your neck, do it in Birmingham. They've been great. Everyone here at UAB has been great. Um, but for real, um, it's meant a ton to me that so many of you have been so kind and reached out, stopped in to see me, texted me. I know I feel like I sound like a broken record, but I am very grateful and uh, I'm gonna be all right. God bless you. Making his Raw debut this week, Braun Breaker teamed up with Champa to defeat the Dirty Dogs. Talking about his potential main roster call-up, Dutch Mantel said on Smack Talk that this could be a kiss of death for Braun. I genuinely believe that it is basically like a kiss of death. Braun Breaker is just being fast-tracked to make it. How many times have I seen them fast-track to get a talent over there, and then he gets over there and just sits there, does nothing? Just because they're going over doesn't mean they're going to be a success. They could get over there and just bomb just flatten out. The company has got to do the right thing with them. Braun Breaker, I hate the name. I would call him Vaughn, but I think he could be a star there. That's the bloodline. Let him go and do the stuff. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.